I'm Eugene Meyer, President of the Federal Society, and on behalf of the Federal Society and the American Constitution Society, both of which groups are co-sponsoring this event, I want to welcome all of you here uh, you, uh, to this uh, discussion, conversation on the Constitution with Justice Breyer and Justice Scalia. Uh, all of you should have gotten at one stage or another uh, cards when you came in here. If you want to ask a question, uh, write, write it out and pass it to the aisle. Uh, there will be, on, on occasion, uh, uh, people coming up and down the aisle who, who will take those cards. If you're, on the, if you're on the seat on the aisle, if cards are passed to you, if you could hold them uh, until, at some stage, somebody comes by to get them, we'd appreciate that very much. Uh, with, uh, I, now to introduce our moderator, I'd like to turn it over to Lisa Brown, who's the Executive Director of the American Constitution Society. Thanks, Gene. I just would like to add my welcome to all of you. Um, ACS is really privileged to be co-sponsoring this event this evening. And Justice Scalia, Justice Breyer, we are extremely honored by your presence this evening. Clearly, constitutional issues are the subject of much live debate today, and in both uh, legal discourse and much broader public discussion. And so we're really lucky to have with us what every, who everyone recognizes to be um, the biggest experts in the country on constitutional interpretation. So we are very much looking forward to hearing from you. And we're very pleased to have um, Jan Crawford Greenberg with us this evening to help guide the discussion. Not that I think it will need any guiding. Um, uh, Jan is an ABC News correspondent who covers the Supreme Court and provides legal analysis for ABC News. She has a wealth of experience covering the Supreme Court and national legal issues for both print and broadcast media from the Chicago Tribune to PBS to CBS and now at ABC. Jan's actually working on a book on the Supreme Court right now, which will come out early next year, so we are in very capable hands this evening. Jan. Thanks. Well, it's my honor to be here, and I thought that we would uh, just start by kind of looking very far back. Um, I wanted to bring up this famous story between two long ago legal titans uh, who had had lunch, Judge Han and Justice Holmes. And as Justice Holmes uh, left the lunch, Judge Han said, do justice, sir, do justice. And uh, Justice Holmes stopped his carriage and said, it's not my job to do justice. My job is to apply the law. Justice Breyer, are you Holmes or Hand? <laughs> I'd be very happy to be either one. <laughs> and the, the, the short answer is when we have cases, we try to apply the law and get the right answer in the case. And of course, we both think, I believe, that ultimately the point of law is to satisfy a human desire that's probably 10 or 20,000 years old. Uh, that people, of course, want justice. Justice, justice shall you pursue. And they want it, uh, and they expect, ultimately, that the law will help them achieve that very basic and noble end. And we understand what the basic end is, but we also think, or at least I do, and I'm sure Justice Scalia does, that you don't necessarily get to that end simply by trying to look for what is the intuitively nicer result in each case. So we're there to apply the law, but we don't forget what the ultimate objective is. Justice Scalia, what do you think Justice Holmes meant by that? Oh, Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> let, 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 let me describe uh, probably the, the case that I've, I've had over the last 20 years that I felt produced. I think just to, I, I'm afraid we've lost. Thing is not on. I think it may not be. Did you do this, Justice Breyer? <laughs> <laughs> the little no. <laughs> there's some. Oh. Uh, uh, good. Let, let me it's really coming on and off, and I don't know what to do about it. Let me describe the case um, that I had over the last 20 years in, in which I, I most felt that, that really justice was not being served if I was to be the arbiter of justice. Uh, uh, there, there was a piece of legislation designed to preserve the integrity of uh, American Indian uh, tribes, which prescribed that uh, uh, no, no child of, uh, of uh, members of the tribe could be 
of any tribe could be adopted by persons uh, outside the tribe without the uh, permission of the tribal council. And there was a young Indian man and a, a young Indian girl who had had a child. They were not married. And, and, and they had given the child up for adoption by a, a very well-to-do rancher. And as I recall, the child had been with, with these people for two or three years. And uh, the issue was, you know, whether the child had to go back to the tribe, uh, if the tribal council said so. And I, you know, uh, we decided the case, uh, yes, the child had to do it, because that was very clearly what the statute provided. Now, I, you know, I don't think that that was the way things should have come out. I would think that if the child's parents wanted the child to be with someone that they thought would, would best take care of, 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 of their child, that it should be up to them and not up to some tribal council. Nonetheless, it is not my job to say what's uh, justice and what isn't justice. My job is to interpret the law adopted by the people's representatives as fairly as possible. And, and the only fair interpretation of that law w uh, produced that result. Now, I will say that um, I might feel differently if I sat on a trial court. You know, a trial court is much more interested in getting result in the particular case. By the time you get up to an appellate court, and, and lawyers ought to learn this, I don't much care about your particular case. I am not about to produce a better result in your case at the expense of creating terrible results in a hundred other cases, because that's what appellate courts do. They set forth principles that govern an immense number of other cases. So what I'm concerned about as an appellate judge is a legal principle that will produce justice in the sense of giving the fairest interpretation of the statute over a large number of cases. As I say, if I were a district judge, you know, a district judge can, well, you know, those of you who know. <laughs> There are a lot of non-reviewable ways in which he can make the case come out right. <laughs> Justice Breyer, let me, when have you had a case that the conclusion, that the law took you to a conclusion that you found personally repugnant? <laughs> Quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't go into specifics. Well, Justice because, Scalia gave us an example. What, well, I think those you? don't come up very often. I think, I think, uh, I think, uh, normally, uh, the cases that we have where I agree with them very much, and people don't understand this, uh, and, but we're in a court particularly where what we decide, and I just emphasize what he said, what we decide affects 300 million people. And if you try to worry about the equities just before the two individuals before the court, you could really get it wrong in respect to 299 million others. And so that is important. Now, what I think normally happens in our court and in a lot of appellate courts is that the issue in front of us is actually not clear what the answer is, particularly when we divide five to four, or seven to two, or eight to one, or something else. And we, we're unanimous 40 percent of the time. You start getting to those other questions, and uh, we're five, four, maybe 20 percent of the time. And, uh, you start, and it's not always the same five, the same four. And the reason is normally because those words in the statute of the application of a constitution is really open. Say, so look to the precedents. If the precedents decided it, what's it doing in our court? And uh, if in language decided it, and I'd say even in any, any of the obvious tools that we have. 